Bridgerton season two, episode two, and I am doing a reaction video for each episode of Bridgerton. I know some people review the whole season at once, but I like to take my time and really talk about it because I love this show. So at the end of each video, you'll see the links to the next episode. I'm trying to do one a day. So this is only for episode two. Um, so let's get into it. So Kate is being her own a thorny self. We're calling this a thorny sister. So she's still a line, line blocking for her sister Edwina because she doesn't want Anthony anywhere near her sister. She controlling every aspect of this so-called coming out party and this uh, diamond selection that the queen has made of Edwina. And then on the side, the queen is trying to figure out who Miss Whistledown is too. So we come to find out the only reason she chose Edwina to be the diamond was because she wanted to be able to keep track of Edwina. So she done, hi she done hired and got all these sort of investigator people. They're supposed to keep track of every person who talks to Edwina. Because the way the queen figures it, whoever talks to Edwina, one of them has got to be Miss Whistledown because that's how she tries to get all her gossip. So she knew that the, that Miss Whistledown was going to eventually try to talk to Edwina. So this this is we we come to find out that the queen was being a little sneaky when she chose Edwina in the first place. So Kate starts lining they all these men up, but you know who she left off the list? Anthony, because she says she want a love connection for her sister. I heard that she don't want no business arrangement. And Anthony's talking about he's marrying for business. He's trying to pick a woman like he's picking cattle. Kate says she wants her sister have to have a love connection. Like I said in the video number one, Kate may be blocking for Edwina because she says she doesn't like Anthony. But let me tell you, I can already tell she likes him. this is like some high school stuff when you pretend like you don't like a boy, but you really like him. That's Kate. So she set up a date for after races with this one guy named Mr. Lumbly. I think that's his name. Girl, he cute. Um, he's easy on the eyes. And, you know, he and Edwina really do look good together, but he's a good looking man. But when they get to the race, this other guy comes up to Kate named Mr. Dorset and, and acts like he's all interested in Kate. And so then they are, all four of them start sitting together. But lo and behold, we find out that was all a setup because Anthony, he, he used Mr. Dorset as his wingman. He was basically, you go ahead and you ask Kate to watch the races with you. And that'll leave a little spot for Anthony to come in and swoop in and start talking to Edwina. So, you know, Anthony, he's more mature than this Mr. Lumley guy. Mr. Lumley looked a little younger. So he outwits the young fella. He tells him, why don't you go get the lady some lemonade? <laughs> So next thing you know, Mr. Lumley's going up giving lemonade and there go Anthony sliding right on in on the bench, sitting right next to Edwina. That young fella left that older man um, out with him. And when that happens, Kate is annoyed to no end. She's so bothered by it. So the next thing you know, here go Anthony and Kate getting into it. They start talking about which horse is going to win. So Kate starts putting down Anthony's, uh, the way he chooses a horse. It's all based on feelings, no facts. And here's Kate. She analyzing the soil and everything else. She analyzing the soil, the wind, everything else on the horse. And Kate says, okay, you so basically she's calling Anthony trivial. And so she says, you know, that's not how you pick a horse. So anyway, she ends up picking the horse and lo and behold, her horse does win. And she's like, oh, I love outwitting a, 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 a Viscount. I love winning. <laughs> And you know, um, Anthony, the Viscount, he loves winning too. He definitely don't want to lose. And to lose to Kate too, a female, you know, he really bothered now. But Edwina, she starts to really like Anthony. She, you know, she's like, you know, she's telling Kate to stop blocking. And Kate's like, uh-uh, he's dishonest. You don't need to be liking him. Absolutely not. So she's like, no, she does not want Edwina getting attached to Anthony at all. So Edwina was like, doesn't Kate, doesn't this horse remind you of um, this other horse? And now she's like, no, it doesn't. Come on, let's go. And then later on, Anthony shows up at the house at Lady Danbury's house and he comes and brings a whole horse for a gift for um, Edwina, a whole horse. But there go Kate. She is not impressed. She runs down. She tries to block. He said, don't be bringing this horse over here. And Anthony's like, why can't I give your sister a horse? He said, when we was at the races, she said this horse reminded her of um, another horse. And then Kate had to tell him the whole story like, no. It did remind her of another horse. That was a character in a book. She was talking about my sister reads. So there goes Anthony feeling all stupid because he was thinking Edwina was talking about a real horse and she was talking about a, talking about a, a story in a book. So Anthony's just like perturbed how much Kate judge him and looks down on him and scowls at him. And he's like, you know what? You make so many presumptions about me and you judge me all wrong. And she's like, I know who you are. She's like, you ain't fooling me. I know who you are. You're not honest. You do a, bu a bunch of broken promises. You careless. Man, she's running the list down. We got to really find out what this backstory is why, how Kate became so thorny and mean because I mean I know she's might have had some few things in her background where people probably rejected her 
But Lord, we got to find out um, how did she become with this such this tough exterior on the outside? So later on, uh, Lady Danbury holds a little soiree for the ladies. And this is when all the men going to get to come and sort of like, you know, charm um, Edwina and, and do a little talent show or something. What else they're going to do? Read poetry, play instruments do a magic show who knows so anyway kate you know definitely doesn't want anthony there so she doesn't even invite him so he doesn't even know that there's a soiree going on it's not to his family starts to say they're about to go to this soiree but he's like wait a minute how did i not get invited to the soiree so anyway he ends up talking to his brother and says he's complaining about kate how she's all thorny and she's blocking and he's like uh-uh i'm not gonna let this woman defeat me i'm not gonna not win and the brothers are like are you really winning in to win the woman being Edwina, like you want to love her or you just doing this because you want to win. But you know, Anthony, it's a competition. I tell you, he love a competition. So his brother starts schooling, talking about, you know, you need to, you need to learn how, what love is really about is passion from the heart. And he starts reciting all these beautiful words, everything. So then Anthony gets his big idea. He going to steal his brother's words and then take his words to the soiree, crash the soiree party, and then try to read these words back to Edwina as if it's his original poem. So he crashes the soiree. He gets up in front of Edwina and he starts reciting the poetry from like his brother had said. Basically, it was the original poetry. In the middle of it, he looks over at Kate and he can see her eyes of disgust. And he's and in the middle of it. He just stops. He says, you know what? I can't do this. I can't pretend like these are me, these are my words. I was surprised. I thought he was going to go along with it and ride in that way. But no, he stopped in the middle and said, you know what? These are not my words and I'm not going to use them and pretend like they're my words. But then he just started speaking from the heart. He started talking about, you know, words can be hollow. Words can be empty unless there's um, action behind it. And he said, I'm a man of action. He says, one thing you could count on is I'm not going to talk and not do. Basically, he says that he's a doer. He's going to show up. He said he's a man of action and duty. And in those actions, he is not lacking. And you know what? Edwina was impressed. So Kate, but Kate used it to turn it around against him. See, she says, look at that. See, he's not a man of passion. He's not going to be able to give you the love deserved. But Edwina, she getting tired of Kate. Edwina was like, you know what? Maybe his honesty makes him a gentleman. And that's something I should be looking for. Someone who is a gentleman. Not necessarily all passion, but Edwina, she getting tired of Kate blocking. She really is. She's, she's starting to get um, upset with her big sister. But Kate makes a big old scene, knocking people over in the soiree. And she leaves and goes to the room because she's so frustrated and she's fuming. And Lady Danbury comes in there and starts telling her the same thing that Anthony Mother told her. You're going to be alone because your attitude is going to keep you alone. Just like Lady Bridgerton had told Anthony that he was going to be alone for his attitude and all his pickiness. Lady Danbury is telling Kate, uh, you're going to be alone. You're going to be all alone. And Kate, with her little slick tongue, was like, well, look at you. You alone, Miss Danbury. And Miss Danbury was like, oh, no, you better check yourself. She goes, I'm not alone. She goes, I live my life. I was married. I'm a widow. I lived and did a lot of things. She said, uh -uh, don't get it twisted. You are not me and I am not you. She basically said, I have lived and I have loved. I have experienced love. But you, you haven't experienced anything. And she was like, no, 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 don't get it twisted. You are not me. She says, and not only are you not me, you never will be if you keep continuing down the road you on. She, she read, she read Kate in that moment. One good thing I like in this episode is Colin is back. If you saw my episode one, I was like, oh, I wish Colin came back. And I wish he and Penelope got together and they fell in love and everything. And I didn't even think Colin was going to be on this show at all this season. But ooh, he came back. I'm so excited for the possibility of these two getting together. But every time Penelope tries to get close to Colin, here come um, uh, Eloise blocking and pulling her away to do something she wants her to do. I told you in the last episode, I actually think Eloise is a bad friend. She don't, she don't even see that her friend like her brother. She don't know nothing going on in Penelope's life. Eloise is so fixated on her life and what she wants to do, exposing Miss uh, Whistledown and everything else. She cares nothing. She don't even really ask Penelope any um, questions about what's going on with her family and the struggles they're having. I don't know. To me, Eloise is just wrapped up into herself. But Penelope, we know, is in love with Colin. And it's kind of really sad because Colin has friend zone Penelope like no other. Colin was like, you know, when he was on his little trip, he swore off women. He just wanted to concentrate on himself and learn about himself. And Penelope was like, well, you swore off women. And he's like, yeah. He said, she says, well, I'm a woman. And he was like, well, you don't count. You my friend. Oh, my good Lord. That stung. That if you went that that in a friend zone, what is a friend zone? And then you got Eloise and she's just, you know, all in to find out who Miss Whistledown down is. She's, you know, Inspector Clouseau. She's she's looking at paper from um, oh, this paper matches this paper. This must be where the paper is getting uh, printed from at the printer's office. She tracks down what printer printed the paper for this other news, this other um, article, because she's thinking it's the same printer for the Whistledown paper. 
she goes over there knocking on doors and this one fella comes to the door and he got about as a slick mouth as Eloise. I think these two might end up getting together later on because you know what? There's two peas in a pod. Oh, Eloise, you know how she looks down on this as gossipy. And when she showed up, he assumed she was a gossiper. She's like, oh no, I'm much more substantial than that. He was like, I don't know if you are. If you're running around here just trying to find out who the author of the whistle down are, how much... How intellectual can you be? And she says, oh, I'm into women's rights. And he said, well, if you into women's rights, then you need to be reading this, not the stuff you're reading. I heard that. Tell her. So then she starts telling Penelope that she's getting close to filling out the printer. And she's looking at the fonts, the printer fonts. Girl, this girl is getting deep into it. So Penelope starts getting a little nervous that she's going to figure out who it is. So Penelope decides, you know what? I'm going to change some of my fonts on my um, on the um, printing. So that way, uh, Louise doesn't think it's the same printer. So she decides to go to some market and get a new font. And when she's down there, she sees Miss um, De, De La Croix, who does makes all the uh, makes all the dresses, and she starts running away. So I don't know. Is, does this mean Miss De La Croix is gonna figure out that uh, Penelope is Miss Whistledown? Uh oh. But that's it, y'all. I'm gonna watch episode three, and I'll up my, upload my video um, probably tomorrow. So talk to you later.